For an enterprise, the ERP system like SAP is a system of record for all its master data like customer profile and transactional data like invoices. SAP embodies massive, complex, super databases that houses all this data. Enterprises need to move this data back and forth between different external and internal applications and entities. It is often a daunting task for a non-SAP expert to get ready access to this vital data for critical use cases. Good news is that MuleSoft's SAP connector simplifies the process of connecting into SAP and moving data in and out of it. You can then leverage other application connectors and APIs to fulfill your connectivity requirements. In this video, we will walk through a use case where we want to query a customer master record from SAP instance. SAP provides large set of business application programming interface, also known as BAPIs, to move this kind of data. We will leverage the MuleSoft platform to quickly connect into SAP, form the desired request, invoke the right PAPI, and interpret the results. We will do all of this using simple drag and drop configuration driven tool set. Let's start. To design and configure our integrations, I will need AnyPoint Studio. I can download this tool from MuleSoft dot com once I have downloaded AnyPoint Studio I will open it up and start a new workspace to start integrating into SAP I will first create a new project There are three main parts visible over here. On the left is the project directory structure. On the right is the palette with all the different connectors and design patterns. And in the middle is the canvas where I will start configuring my integrations. Mule integration applications are built around one or more flows. So first I will create a flow. I'll go into the palette type in flow and drop that component in the canvas. Then I will drop uh, an SAP connector in the middle of the flow. So I will go back into the palette, type SAP, drop it in the middle. If I look in the properties, I see various configuration parameters for the SAP connector. I can go and configure the exchange pattern from one way or request response. I can go in and add uh, the connector configuration. And here you will see different parameters that I can add in to connect into my SAP instance. I will add in the SAP credentials. If you notice, I am not hard coding the values. I am using property placeholders. I will put the values for these in an external property file for additional security. I will also add in the SAP Java Connector native library, SAP Java Connector library, as well as SAP Java IDoc class library. Once I have finished the configuration, I will press OK. I need to extract customer data from the SAP instance. For that, I will use a BAPI. So I will go and select type BAPI and enter the name. I will select that BAPI. I will go and select the desired RFC type. 
This concludes the SAP connector configuration. Now to in order to successfully invoke this BAPI, I will create the BAPI request. For that, I will go into the palette and pick transform message component and drop it right before the SAP connector. If I go into the transform message component, you will see that on the right hand side, it automatically gets populated with the metadata of the BAPI request. I can then select the fields from the left hand side and map it to my BAPI request. You can see that there are various fields that I can populate into my for my BAPI request. For example, I can select the number of max rows that I want to return for the customer list. Now I can either pick the value from the left hand side and directly map it to my max rows or I can just go in here and hard code a value. Similarly, I will go in and populate the rest of the field as well. Now our flow is invoked through an HTTP transport. So we will go into the palette and drop in an HTTP connector into the source of our flow. We'll go into the HTTP connector, configure the connector, and click Save. This concludes our flow configuration. In this flow, we are connecting into our SAP instance to retrieve a list of customers. The flow will get executed as soon as we receive a request through the HTTP connector. We will then format a request for our desired BAPI and connect into the SAP instance where the BAPI would get executed. Once the SAP BAPI is invoked, the connector would return the customer list as a response from the connector. Now we can go and add any downstream applications after this SAP connector to process and consume that list of customers. So we can go into our palette and add Salesforce connector, or if you wanna write the results to a file, we can add the file connector uh, to our, uh, uh, just after our SAP connector. But in this case, in this flow, uh, the result of our uh, BAPI invocation is just gonna be returned uh, as the response to our HTTP request. To test this application, we can run it right in AnyPoint Studio. So let's, uh, I would right click on the project and pick run as any new application. Now our application is running and it's waiting for a request to come through the HTTP transport. So to test the application, we can use our browser and send a request to our HTTP transport over 8081. We can even send some uh, query parameter and press enter. If you see our request hit the application and uh, it created the BAPI request for SAP, invoke the BAPI, and deliver the result back into the browser. So in conclusion, we see that MuleSoft provides all the tools required to create a standard integration strategy. We do this with the help of certified connectors, various out-of-the-box integration patterns, and we create reusable APIs on top of that. We use this strategy to get access to vital data residing in SAP to fulfill critical use cases. We can do this quickly and painlessly with easy to use drag and drop tools. Behind the scene, we take care of exception scenarios, stability and scalability requirements 
so you can focus on the business.